what's happening everybody welcome this is whistlekick martial arts radio today we're doing a follow-up to the past episode but this one we're kind of flipping it on its head how has mma helped traditional martial arts Ooh, there's a question people don't talk about in a kind respectful non-agenda-ish way but we're gonna try who's we well if you are watching you may not know that i'm joined today as i often am by good friend andrew adams Andrew, hi. Hey, how's it going, man? Good, how are you? I'm great. It's a good awesome. day. It is a good day. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, founder of Whistlekick, and we've been doing what we do here on this show for six and a half years because we love traditional martial arts. It doesn't matter what you train, where you train, how you train, why you train. If you train, we're all in with you. If you want to check out what we do, because we do a lot more than this show, go to whistlekick.com. You'll find all the stuff that we do over there. And one of the things that we've got, well, it's a store with a constantly updating, rotating set of products from protective equipment to fun apparel and all kinds of stuff in between. If you find something there that you like, use the code podcast15, help support the show, put something cool on your back. Hey, everybody wins. You want to go deeper on this or another episode of the show? They're all available at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Every episode we've ever done is available for free. And over there for our interview episodes, for example, you're going to find links to guest social media and photos, videos, things that we talk about, books. It's all over there. If you like what we do, if our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world means something to you, well, consider supporting us. Whether it's by making a purchase or telling friends about what we do, or we have a Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash whistlekick. Andrew, that was your cue. Uh, I don't want to do it every episode. It, it loses its, its pizzazz. <laughs> but you were you were sitting there, you were sitting there like just like kind of shifty eyeballs back and forth. Like I'm not going to do it this time. <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> folks, can you tell that we have a good time and that the more time we spend together, the better the better friends we get. Uh, but what do we do at Patreon? We give you some behind the scenes. We tell you who's coming up on the show. We send you exclusive merch, apparel, mugs, stickers. Uh, we give you bonus content, audio, video, book drafts. There's a ton of stuff. And yeah. how do I know we're doing a good job with Patreon? People don't stop contributing to Patreon. Yeah, very and all rarely. It takes, someone... And all it takes is $2 a month. You get to know who's on the show yeah. coming up. For example, if you were in the $2 Patreon, you would know that next week's guest is I mean, that's going to be so cool. It's amazing. It's going to be 74 hours long because it's just that great of a of an episode. We just, <laughs> we had to record for days. Like we took naps. Yeah. We're getting a little silly, but the, the point is Patreon is the, the number one way that we build value on top of the show. We give you the show for free. If you like what we do and you want more of what we do, check out the Patreon because you give us a little bit of money. We're going to give you a whole bunch of stuff everybody wins. All right. So Andrew, we did an episode a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah about a month ago. Right. Well, about by the time ago. this comes out, it'll be a couple months ago. Uh, episode looks like 655 is MMA ruining traditional martial arts. And we got some good feedback. Honestly, we got less uh, angry feedback than I'd expected. Maybe it's because the people who get angry don't pay attention to us anymore. That's totally fine. Yeah. But we did get some feedback that MMA has actually helped traditional arts in a number of ways. And I thought it only fair that we have a conversation about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought so too. Um, a listener of the show, we'll, we'll shout him out here by name because uh, he's a friend of mine and I know he'd be okay with that. But Josh Hodges uh, sent an email to us and uh, gave us his thoughts on, on that episode mm. uh, and and wanted us to discuss how MMA has helped traditional martial arts. The other side of that coin. Yeah. Yeah, things rarely occur in a in a vacuum. We rarely have stuff where it's completely one-sided. Yeah, things are rarely one-directional. Yeah. But just as my main argument, if one style of martial arts was so overwhelmingly better in every way, people wouldn't do other things. Yep. I, I tell students that all the time. If If... For example, I teach drumming. If drumming was easy, everybody would do it. You know? Exactly. Exactly. 
So just to recap, in case somebody didn't check out that episode, what we did is, is we went through a whole bunch of elements that are common in mixed martial arts culture. And we acknowledge that there are some dramatic differences between, let's say, your run-of-the-mill MMA gym that may even have some traditional martial arts taught in the same physical facility versus, let's say, the UFC and internationally exposed professional mixed martial arts correct you know there, there's a lot going on in between there and most of our conversation focused on the negative elements that are common in the pro level high level mma mm -hmm. and we pointed a bunch of things out you can go back you can check out that episode if you want so let's let's flip it on its head if I were to ask you, because I think this is probably the easiest way to start this conversation. If I were to ask you what going on right now in traditional martial arts would not be there without MMA's exposure, what would you think of first? My first answer would be the, I don't want to say acceptance because that implies that it was that it was unacceptable before, mm -hmm. but the awareness of utilizing the ground and how to defend yourself while on the ground. Mm -hmm. Prior to the UFC, of the schools that I knew of, did very little training at all on the ground, yeah. and I think that that was a deficit in that potentially could be considered a deficit in their training. I, I would agree to say it a little differently. Striking based martial arts recognized that they were, many of them were doing their students a disservice by not giving them at least some fundamentals to be used in case the fight ends up on the ground. The yeah. argument, I just won't go to the ground is while, while that may be a goal, we all know that goals are not 100% achieved. That's, they're not goals, yep. right? Uh, people trip, they fall, there's momentum, there's weight shift. There's all kinds of reasons why you might end up on the ground and the recognition that, yep, we need to do something. Absolutely. I, I think is, is a very good thing because it broadened the conversation. We now hear a lot of martial arts schools talking about the different ranges, right? Yep kicking range and punching range and wrestling range and grappling range, right? Like different, different uh, schools will break it down differently. You know, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four or five different ranges. Great. You can't solve a problem unless you acknowledge a problem. You can't unpack a situation unless you have awareness over it. And if yep. nothing else, there has been more awareness brought to the, the circumstances of how a fight happens from MMA. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think just the explosion of BJJ specifically, but in general, you know, ground fighting uh, has immensely improved since the UFC came out. I would completely agree. Ready for the next one? Yeah. I got one. Go ahead. The recognition that some of the things that we were always taught worked or would work in a fight, but were just too dangerous. Not all of that was true. Correct. Yep. Hitting someone in the head and knocking them out is way harder than we were ever told. Yep. It's just, it's not... All you have to do is kick the guy right here and he's going down. Well, maybe, but clearly not always, because yep. you don't have to spend much time watching MMA to see some really incredible shots and people don't go down. Mm -hmm. Yep, it happens, absolutely. I, I would even say often. It happens often. Now, of course, you could make a counter argument. These people train for that. They're used to getting hit. Their central nervous system is conditioned against such things. Yeah, you, absolutely. All of those things are true. But... So could the person that you're involved in an altercation with on yep. the street, right? Uh, and I think that for a lot of traditional schools, 
that's been difficult to, to wrap their heads around because you get this epiphany, you know, maybe you're 30, 40, 60 years into your training and you were brought up believing a thing and now you still believe the thing and you teach the thing and your students believe that thing. And now there are a bunch of counterexamples against that thing. Yep. Ooh. Not everyone handled that well. Some people got even more, they turtled up even more with their beliefs while others said, okay, maybe I have to take at least some of what I'm doing back to the drawing board and acknowledge, okay, maybe it's not going to be one kick here. Maybe it's going to be two. Maybe I need to follow that up with this, or maybe this needs to lead into it. Yeah, exactly. And I think the next one, which is related to yours, is finding out the things we do that do work. Um, you know, one of the things that I have often heard when talking with people who participate in MMA is, oh, well, I don't, you know, I don't use, I don't use traditional martial arts or, you know, I don't, I don't use my stances or whatever. And then you, you take a snapshot of them in the middle of a fight, in the middle of a technique. And like, th that's exactly the stance that we would use. They're transitioning out of it. And, you know, they're transitioning into it and then onto something else, which is something that was talked about. Oh, gosh, I'm not going to remember who it was. But one of the Okinawan karate masters had a saying that uh, karate uses many stances and yet it has none. Mm. And the concept of as a beginner, we use lots of stances to learn how our body moves. But as you get upper in the upper ranks, you're not staying in those stances. They aren't static. They are moving. So there really are no stances. They're just transitional, right? And seeing that that works and looking at, and maybe that this is, you know, maybe has more to do with the fact that YouTube exists and we can go and look at fights now a little more in depth and seeing MMA practitioners doing moves that we then can take extrapolate out and show oh well they were essentially doing this move from this form mm -hmm. being able to make those connections of things that did work and that do work i think is really interesting i i, I completely agree we we could very well take a tangent here about what you said you know, MMA practitioners saying, you know, I don't do traditional arts. We, but we've gone there quite a few times. So I don't really want to go there. Yeah. But the, the, that criticism does have some value because it forces us as traditional practitioners to understand why we do what we do. If someone watches, uh, um, a karate class where students are walking or stepping forward from back stance to back stance. Anybody who's ever done that in a deep back stance, you're never going to fight in that way. It's a terrible thing to do from that perspective, but it helps build a ton of stuff. If you can move forward in a back stance, you can move backwards in a back stance way easier, right? There's some yeah. benefits to understanding, et cetera. It helps us understand that our training protocols are not necessarily one-to-one -one correlations with what goes on in a fight or a competition, but that does not mean they are devoid of value. Yeah, I would agree. It Pre-MMA, it was easy to point to a lot of things and say, well, you would just do this or you would use it in this way. Okay, sure. But now, well, I don't see anybody doing anything with that. And in fact, when I see people who have ended up in that position accidentally, it hasn't gone well for them. Okay, well, maybe we're not using this in a one-to-one. -one. Maybe we're using this to supplement something else. We're building strength. We're building proprioception. We're flexibility, whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't think cross training would be as big as it is without MMA. Absolutely. The Absolutely. willingness to look outside one's own school at what other people are doing, even in the same style, 
you know, if I'm a, a Taekwondo person and I love Taekwondo, I'm all in on Taekwondo, that doesn't mean I'm not going to look at, oh, how does that Muay Thai person throw that kick? How does that person throw that kick? You know, maybe I'm looking at one specific technique or maybe I'm just looking at, you know, I I feel like I, I'd love some better X, I don't know, elbows, maybe in that example. You know, I, I yeah. the idea of using my elbows really resonates for me. And, you know, my, my Taekwondo upbringing um, hasn't given me a lot in the way of elbows. Maybe I'll go down the street and do some Muay Thai for six months and, and build up my elbow game, you know, just throwing bones, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm kind of swimming if you're watching, you can see. Yeah, now we're dancing. Now we're dancing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's been really advantageous. We're seeing so many blurry lines in not necessarily what is style to style, but the implementations. You know, when 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 we when we ran our session at free training day, right? We saw people who were throwing techniques that really quote unquote did not make sense for them in what they traditionally practiced because they were able to move slowly enough that they saw different things in different ways. <laughs> And I think that's awesome. I love watching that because that leads to epiphanies. What's the best technique to throw? The one that makes the most sense at that time, given those circumstances. Absolutely. The more techniques that you have to draw on, the better it is. The better you are, rather. Yeah, I would I would agree wholeheartedly. You know, just the 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 thought of looking outside of your own school at what other schools or styles or the way other schools do things is a great thing. And I don't think it would have the exposure it has today if it wasn't for the UFC. Yeah. Are we missing anything? Um, the only There's one that I'm thinking else. of, what, what's that? I said there has to be something else. I don't feel like we've covered it all. So the one, the only other one I'm thinking of is when I enter the dojo now, I make sure to have a boom box playing uh, my theme song. <laughs> You have entrance music. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that would not be as big as it was if it wasn't for um, if it wasn't for the, the UFC. I, I... Well, we just got demonetized two... on YouTube. No, I, I played a, a short enough clip that we're good. OK, thank you. Um. At, at, at risk of piling on, I make sure to put on a poorly constructed trucker's hat immediately after stepping off the training floor every class. Oh, that's fair. Yep. For to 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 thank my sponsors. No. Um, I will say that e even though we're we're being playful with that, there's an nobody's paying to watch traditional martial arts mm -hmm. on pay per view. The closest thing we have is the karate combat folks, and they're doing great stuff. But those numbers are just dwarfed. They're abysmal. Ab abysmal, I mean, compared there's a, to... There's a great season. contraction of dismal and abysmal. A dismal. You're right. A dismal. Great, brand new word. It's like uh, chillaxing. Yeah. There you go. Andrew made a new word. I hope everyone uses it. Entertainment value is important. We've talked about it ad nauseum on this show over the years, more so in the early years. If things are fun, people stick around. If people enjoy watching a thing or doing a thing, they stick around. And we see that in MMA culture. You and I just recorded an episode on culture. MMA culture tends to be, tends to have entertainment instilled at a more fundamental level than being, you know, the 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 salt sprinkled on top, as Correct, it is yeah. in most traditional martial arts schools. People that train in MMA gyms, in my experience, tend to hang out with each other more. They tend to go to events together more. They yeah. tend to be more open to cross-training and doing other things more. And I think those are all really good things. They're, they're just, they're more, we talk about the martial arts lifestyle. MMA practitioners tend to embody lifestyle of what they do more so than traditional practitioners. Yeah, I say. yeah I, I could see that. I can not, see that. not everyone, certainly not no, everyone, no. but if we were to find some way to score the average. Yeah, 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 I, I can see that. All right. 
did we miss anything? If you're watching or listening, first off, thank you. But if there's an element here that we missed, we want to hear from you. Best thing Tell to do, us. check out the Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes, and post your feedback there. Why do we like it there rather than emailed? Well, because then people could respond. If you've got something that's horribly critical and you really want to tear us apart, yeah, please e email us privately, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. But most of the time, I think people know we're, we're being fair and we're doing the best we can. So if you have something to add, if you do it publicly, it gives everybody the opportunity to learn and, and have some conversation about it. And I think that that's really important because we're all trying to learn from each other. We're trying to build this community. If you want to share this episode, please do. If you want to check out all the episodes, please do. In your podcast feed or whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to support us, you can tell people what we're doing. You can leave reviews, buy books on Amazon, buy something using the code podcast15, like one of our training programs, or even support the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. As little as two bucks a month, you can get in on there. And I think that's it for today so thanks everybody until next time train hard, train hard smile, smile and have, have a great, great day, day.